TJ, I think you, you hit one on the baseline in the fourth quarter and like motion to the heavens. I, I think, uh, uh, was that just like, that was the one I needed to get going? Yeah, man. I, I, I put in a lot of work on my, on my game, shooting the basketball, working on spots. And you know, sometimes the ball doesn't go in for you, but that's a, just a part of the process. And you just continue to fall in love with the work. But yeah, I just needed to see one go in. That's all, man. I, I got some good looks tonight. But credit our team. They played really well. Guys stepped up, made shots, made plays defensively. I thought we played a, we played a much better game, um, especially down the stretch, rebounding, getting stops. I didn't get scored on for the game winner tonight. So it was a, it was a better night. How satisfying was it to uh, you know beat a good team without three starters? Yeah, I mean that's that's our DNA. Coach talked about it. We want to compete. We want to share the ball. We want to go out there and put put forth our best effort. And I think I said it before the game. I remember when I was a young player in this league, and guys would be hurt or not traveling or things of that nature. And you get an opportunity to play more minutes. You get an opportunity to kind of show the work that you put in over the course of your career and over the course of this summer and this year. And I'm happy that guys were able to get more extended minutes, be able to show themselves and show that the work is paying off. You know, Trey goes eight for eight. I tried to get him another shot, and I, and I got a turnover. But I think. Tay, you know, you look at Daniels, you look at Jose, you look at Jackson, you look at all those guys who are able to play more minutes tonight and kind of show different things that you may not have seen before, um, but we've all seen in the practice. I think that shows you our depth. That shows you the, the coaches and the player development are doing a tremendous job of developing players, and that shows that we're ready. You know, three starters out, three really good starters, right? You know, guys that, you know, can change the game and impact the game in, in multiple ways weren't out, weren't out there tonight, and we still were able to come away with a win. Yeah, you talked about wanting to see guys come in and, you know, compete when they get that opportunity. But, you know, I mean, your teammates shot like 67% from the field tonight. What was it like just seeing the way they were able to produce? Yeah, they shot the ball extremely well, took advantage of their, their catch goals, took advantage of drives and kicks, finished around the basket. Um, I, I was proud to see it because – I know the work that they put in behind the scenes. I know what it's like to scrimmage against some of these guys. You know, been going against Jose all the camp, and he's been very competitive, very active, combative. You know what I mean? Talking trash, and you know, it means a lot to all of us, right? Like we really want to win. We really want to put on a uh, a good show for our fans and put forth our best effort. And regardless if we make or miss shots, we still got to be able to compete. And I thought tonight we really competed and gave ourselves a chance. Win or lose, I would have been proud of the effort. Yeah, you, got, you guys threw a lot of bodies at uh, Luca tonight. Just what did you think about the way y'all were able to kind of wear him down over the course of the game? Yeah, I mean, he took 30 shots. He had 37 points. Um, he definitely impacted the game, but he was two for 13 from three. I thought we did a good job of crowding him, you know, forcing him to play in different spaces. Obviously, he's a tremendous player. He's going to score. He's going to get assists. He's going to impact the game. But when it mattered most, we were able to get stops, and we were able to con control him down the stretch. What did you think about the job that Tyson did on him, being thrown out there his first real – Maybe eight minutes, and it's okay. Go guard Luca. Yeah, he's he's a he's a very hard worker. You know, he's one of the guys that's to the gym early. You know, I pull up and I get there pretty early, and I see his cars there. I see him stretching. He's getting his shots in with, with Freddie V. He's doing what he's supposed to do to kind of stay ready for these types of moments. And I think he was known as a defender um, coming into the draft, and he showed a, a willingness to defend, right? A, a eagerness to defend, but also showed that you know he can finish around the basket. He's explosive. He's athletic, and he's, his shot is continuing to improve because he's putting the work forward. So I'm happy to see him get minutes. Happy to see him deliver and play well, and, and show that you know he gives us another element of versatility on the offense and defensive end. CJ, when you first arrived last year, you talked about Zion. You pointed to Bi. Could you have foreseen that the bench, the other guys, were going to be you know just as important and valuable to you guys in winning? Yeah, I mean, the bench is, is how you win championships. The bench is how you win playoff games. That's how you win on the road. You know, guys who get paid a lot of money generally perform, right? And they generally are expected to perform at a high level. It's the role players who, you know, get that loose ball. They set the great screen, they roll. They might not score. They might hit the weak side. But those are the players that you need to kind of keep the engine moving. And I think we have a good collective group of guys. You know, Larry did a tremendous job tonight of not only finishing around the basket, but making the right plays when it wasn't there. He defended, you know, one through five. He's able to switch out, guard multiple guys. Najee's guard multiple guys. I think you need um, those intangibles to be displayed every night, and especially during the playoffs. And that'll be the difference between us hosting a home playoff game and going on the road will be how well do, does our bench perform? How well do they take advantage of opportunities? How well do we empower them? You know, how well am I passing the ball? Am I getting guys open in, in certain spots? Am I seeing, you know, the next pass, even if it's not an assist, am I seeing it? And I think when we do that consistently, we'll be a good team and we'll be able to win games like this, even if we're missing starters. I asked Trey this, I wanted to ask you too, is, uh, is Jose a pain to practice against? 
it's a lot of fun. He talks so much. He be talking crazy, but I, I like it. I think it's it, it brings out the best in us in practice. It, it makes it competitive. It makes it chippy, and it makes it so that Willie can't practice us long because we're competing so much and we're going so hard. We can't we can't scrimmage long because we diving for loose balls. It's like it's physical, and I think the the training camp and the approach to training camp is the reason why he's having success now. It's because he's worked. You know, those guys have really worked and conditioned themselves to play hard all the time, to push the tempo all the time, and I think it translates to the games. CJ, what do you remember about the moment when you land on the floor and, and Willie runs out there and, and helps you off? And yeah, no, nah, I really appreciate that, and I don't take many charges, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's winning time when you see me out here trying to take charges and, and, and whatever it takes, but no, I mean, he's a, he's a player's coach. He knows uh, how much this game means to me. He knows how much I pride myself on preparing and, and, and doing the right things on the court and, and doing whatever it takes to win, getting stops, switching, rotating, trying to make the right passes. Um, I think it's a testament to, to being a student of the game. CJ, what do you feel like was the biggest spark in you guys coming out so strong, right? Big first quarter. Was it the loss against Utah? Was it Jose maybe leading you guys because he had a real good first few minutes? Combination. I and mean, We felt like we should have won that Utah game. We let one slip away. They got a lead. We had to fight back, and then we didn't execute, and I got scored on uh, for the game winner. I think it stuck with all of us. You had a chance to, to be 3-0 come back for for game four at the crib, and we kind of had a letdown. We want to make sure that, hey, win or lose or draw, we want to get off to a good start. You know, Dallas Mavericks are scoring 40, 35, 40 points, you know, in the first quarter. They get off the really good starts. They shoot threes. They try to hit, throw the first punch. We want to make sure that we responded well and showed them that we was here and we was for real, and I think we did that. Yeah, and two straight games for you with 10-plus assists. You know, uh, we've talked a bunch of times about wanting to show that you're a complete player and not just a scorer, not just a guy who goes out and get buckets. Uh, does it feel like that's starting to really come into fruition with the way you're playing right now? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I can score. We all know that. Um, I'm, a, I'm a really good player. I take the game seriously. I study the game. I know what I'm not good at, and I try to figure out ways to improve in areas I'm not good at. Pick and roll defense, isolation defense, boxing out on the weak side, rotations, thinking the game more, understanding time and score, understanding shooters, non-shooters, who's cutting. I had a turnover, Herb cut on the pass, strong side corner. Just thinking the game more and understanding that I'm going to be able to score, I'm going to be able to dribble the spots, but I got to be able to, to move players on the court like chess pieces, like checkers, and I think that's the sign of an elite player when the game matches the mind. I think I'm at that intersection in my career where my game is matching my mind, right, where I can think the game through. I can shoot 6 or 20 but still be a plus 10 or a plus 15, still impact the game, hit timely shots, but still be confident and comfortable enough to make the timely pass. Right, and I think that's the next step that I'm trying to take. You know, 20 points or whatever. Like that'll come when it comes. But I need to be able to be efficient. You know, have a good assist to turnover ratio, and generally just consistently make the right plays. And I think that's what I'm building towards. And I think you'll see that. I don't have to talk about it. You'll watch the game and be like, yeah, he's he's playing how he's supposed to. Hey, Caesar. Oh, sorry. Oh, Will was comparing uh, Dyson to uh, to Herb as far as their demeanor. Do you see some of those things similarities? Yeah, very stoic, you know, straight face. You don't really know what's going on, what he's thinking. Make a free throw, miss a free throw in practice, he looks the same. Every now and then you hear the accent come out, but that's it. You know, he works. And I, I think, you know, I'm a worker, right? Like, I work on my game, I work on skill, and I appreciate people who do that. So I've seen the work he's put in, and I'm happy. And I told him, I said, it's an 82 game season. I told everybody, I said, look, it's an 82 game season. For us to be successful, everybody has to be ready every night because you never know what's going to happen in this league. Like, things happen. Like I got I got to play, you know, my second year because the guy in front of me tore his Achilles and the other guy in front of me tore his shoulder up. I was third straight. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you never know what's gonna happen throughout the season. So you have to work so that you're ready. Thanks. 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 Thanks.